Okay. Again, uh, welcome everybody to the October edition of the Westside Computer Club. Um, I was going to start out to tell everybody that our presenter, Scott, um, was supposed to do a presentation on a product called AMP, which is in beta, came out by uh, Amazon, is the one who introduced this. It is a uh, product that was to a free thing that was supposed to allow people to become individual creators of uh, basically their own radio show and be their own uh, radio or be their own DJ using music that's on Amazon so they could play it with the royalties already being paid for by Amazon. And Scott had just started doing this. Uh, he was into his third uh, broadcast, if you will, his third show that he's done. He's really enjoying this thing, only to get an email or a notification yesterday, late yesterday, that Amazon's decided to pull the plug on this product. So he, <laughs> he, he, was, he was really gung-ho over this thing. Um, so he got disenchanted about doing a presentation for tonight we don't know he does not know when they're going to be shutting down amp uh there's no discussion about when it just came out and that they were going to do that so he didn't feel up to putting out a presentation however he did state to me that come november if things change or he finds a new platform to be able to do this on to become a DJ, if you will. And I use the word DJ in a loose term, uh, but essentially that's what it is, like a radio show host that uh, spins music. Um, he says by next month, if something is different or they come out with a new product or AMP is still up, he'll be game for coming in and telling us all about this product. So uh, we do not have a... Um, uh, we did not have, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked by Bob's uh, text that he sent out or chat. Um, so we don't have a present, presenter for tonight and we're going to have to do an ad hoc way. So Bob was wanting to know, did AMP run into copyright violation issues or did they never say why they're being shut down? I do not know any of the answers. Uh, the only thing I know that he was telling me when I asked him about copyright, he says, I'm playing, it's owned by Amazon. This is an Amazon product and I'm using Amazon music on their platform. So the copyrights or royalties are apparently being paid for, apparently being covered by uh, Amazon itself. So this, that is as much as I could tell you, Bob, or anybody has, concerned about the copywriting that was going on on uh, whether there could be a violation or a problem with AMP. I don't know how, I didn't even research this product to find out how long it's been on the market, but it is in beta. So that's as best as I could tell you. I did download it, put it on my phone, and I was going to uh, kind of tag team with him tonight to be able to do this thing, but it all fell through the cracks literally last night. Uh, he was very upset. <laughs> and he says, basically everyone that's, that is a uh, content creator has been slamming Amazon for pulling the plug on this product, but nobody knows when they're gonna pull the, pro pull the plug or when it's gonna shut mm -hmm. down or why it's being shut down, at least to my knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. Feel free to dig in and find out. Is it something like a podcast or what? No, it's this would be a, a live. C consider this is the way he put it. If you subscribe to, uh, let's say, satellite radio uh, in your car or something. The, what he had told me is there's basically only a handful of people that are the actual DJs of that those stations. And they just sit in their house and they come up with these programs and they publish it. And that's what you're hearing when you're on satellite is you're hearing just a few people put these all together. So that's basically the same thing. It's a, like you're having a broadcast 
um, via streaming of somebody putting together their playlist and doing an occasional commentary or comment between the songs or mixing the two. And that's as much as I can tell you about it. I really didn't get too into it because uh, I only heard one of his broadcasts that he had done. And then he told me he was into doing this thing. And I thought this was really great. Brand new technology, cutting edge. And they yanked the carpet out. From wow. So again, we don't know. This may continue next month. It may not. Uh, or he may move to another platform. Scott is a uh, musician, um, not by trade. This is by hobby. He's picked this up in the, actually in the last 10 years, he's picked up becoming a musician and he's really into music. So he loves going to concerts and, and um, concerts and the like all the time. He's always out playing. Uh, he's a ukulele player, as a matter of fact and a um, percussionist or a bongo player. That's where he started out was playing bongos. So uh, he's not your traditional musician. So that is much as I could tell you. I was really hoping Scott would chime in tonight, but I don't believe he is going to do. Um, playlists for streaming services are strictly monitored and curated on behalf of content rights owners. Um, okay. Uh, this is from Bob. We can see what he says in the ch in the chat. Again, I don't know the legalities on how this all works. Um, none whatsoever. I don't believe the uh, the, the playlist. Actually, he was put told me he was using Spotify to create his playlist, and then pulls the music in through um, through Amazon for whatever that's worth. So he's somehow has got this covered. I uh, that may be questionable as to whether or not you can do that. Spotify I, Spotify does have the rights. I don't know if Amazon purchases the rights. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This is what he told me, how, what he's doing, but the logistics of how he's doing it, I don't know. Maybe he goes on Spotify, comes up with a playlist, and then somehow types it into Amazon or goes down a list and, and types it all in and queues it all up. I, I, this I don't know. Um, I don't know how it all works, and I don't know the legality aspect of this yeah. product at all. Yeah, without knowing how it works, we don't know what the situation is on rights. Correct. And um, consider the fact that uh, you and I are not lawyers. We don't need to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> he is using a product that's available on beta. If there's some type of copyright violation, it would not be from him. It would be from amazon who created the product so yeah if they own it if they own I, it i think um he was kind of indicating the way he feels is that this thing is taken off very well around the globe around the literally around the world uh and there's many people that are jumping in and jumping on this bandwagon to do this and it could be overwhelming their hardware they can't keep up with it don't know I don't but know that, either. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what he was indicating uh, that he had seen, because sometimes he'd said he noticed the system would dog down, slow down um, at different places. But anyways, um, that being said, we have no presenter for tonight. We have no um, where this is going to be an open meeting again with open topics since I don't have a presenter. And yeah. yes. I have a question for you. Yes, please do. We can go right into questions. So. Well, <laughs> uh, at the last meeting, you did ask me to look at uh, chat GPT and see how well it would do for investing. Oh, okay. And I don't know if you were kidding or not, but I went ahead and did it. And? And... Well, basically, I, I know something about investing already, so I asked it a few questions, and of course, I didn't try to find out what to invest in, but it did a pretty good job of telling you how to do investing. You know, it, the first word I used was investing, and it, it gave me a, a full page of the types of things to do. It gave me, you know, 10 answers for that, and tells you the types of investments like stocks, bonds, real estate, 
mutual funds, uh, exchange trading funds, uh, commodities, uh, SIFO currencies. That was the first piece of the one page for that question. The next piece was risks and returns, uh, diversifications, time horizons, research and uh, due deliverance. Uh, the next was cost and fees, risk tolerance, investment vehicles, asset allocation. And the last piece of it was monitoring and adjusting. And that's the first thing that it tells you about investing. Okay. And each piece of that had a, a little definition of what it was talking about. All right. So it, it went into detail. I'd rather not read all that detail. If you want, I can, but I'm not the best reader in the world. I will get it word for word, but it would take a while for you. <laughs> and basically my next big question was something that I know about investing. And that was, okay, for chat GP, uh, yeah, GPT, I asked, uh, okay, how would you handle panic investment alterations? Because a lot of people, if they're looking or how should I invest? And they put their money out in one of those types of ways that I've just gone through 10 of. They'd look out there and see that things weren't going the way they wanted to in one of those ways or multiple ways, so they'd panic. All right, and then it went through another eight things. And I go through that list if you'd like. It's like, you know, they'd automatically with panic, they'd sell all their investments or they'd abandon the diversification, they do market timing, uh, they do uh, the chasing of performances, they do over trading, they ignore long term goals, uh, a lack of information, they have ignoring professional advice. Uh, another type of thing is to avoid investment alterations and, cons and consider the following, to have a plan uh, to stay informed, to diversify, don't just put it in one spot, in other words, uh, to embrace volatility and actually to consult a professional, not to do it yourself, which is very smart. Okay, so at that point, I question, uh, the question I gave to uh, Chat GTP or excuse me, GPT was, uh, what is a good way to invest that should most likely achieve a positive result. That being the third question, came up with another 12 answers. Am I doing too much talking like this? Anyone say no? Go ahead and continue, Tom. Yeah, it sounds good. All right. Now this came up with 12 answers here. Wait, what was your, what was that last? Oh, no, it question? sounds good, good idea. What was Go your ahead. question? Posed again. Okay, the last Tom. question, the third question being, uh, what is a good way to invest that should most likely achieve a positive result? That's what I asked them, or it, I should say. Okay, and it came back with set clear financial goals, uh, diversify your portfolio, invest for a long time, avoid timing the market, use dollar cost averaging, choose low cost investments, rebalance your portfolio, stay informed, stand risk tolerance, avoid emotional decisions, consider tax efficiency, seek professional advice. Okay, at that point, the question I gave to chat GPT was, what should be avoided at investing? Okay, and it came back with, let's see how many questions, how many answers, another 14 answers. And at that point, the, the answers were lack of clear investment plan, emotional decision-making, market timing, 
over concentration, oh, excuse me, over concentration, ignoring fees and expenses, chasing performance, neglecting research, frequent trading, lack of diversification, panic selling, not considering taxes, ignoring your risk tolerance, lack of patience, ignoring the importance of asset allocation. At that point, I stopped asking questions because if you looked at the details it gave you for each one of those statements, it gave a real good definition for each one of those statements. And you know, the biggest thing to talk about was the second one I asked it was the panic investment alterations because too many people go out there, put their money, money out there and watch too closely. You know, if they don't do it right, if they invest in just one spot, they'll panic. You have to invest across the board and sit back, hope it works right, hope you invest it properly Sure, some things are going to go crazy and you'll lose money like mad. But if you put it in multiple places, sure, something will drop, but you'll, it will raise somewhere else. So don't just go crazy. Get your money to go over time. Have it come up somewhere. Well, a lot of those people are either uh, day traders, which are uh, they go in early uh, in the market uh, at the beginning of the day. And by the end of the day, they sell out of all their positions and hope they come out ahead. But also, too, you have uh, uh, people that uh, uh, I think think of uh, a lot of the investing as though it's the uh, lotteries, like Powerball tonight. Serious. Yeah. Well, is it drawing I, tonight? No, uh, I was uh, I had misstated that. That's what I thought. Because last was just you would, yeah, yeah. I, one of the things I do with my monies is uh, I have a financial advisor, and he watches the market quite closely. But I have him uh, invested in multiple places. Yeah, and you know he puts it in uh, a certain amount of very active spots and a certain amount of places where it will sit there and rise very slowly or drop very slowly and also i have it invested in things like gold and platinum so it sits there and will rise over a great deal of time but that's the way to invest don't put it in one spot or two spots and expect it to rise quickly because you can get the rock uh, the rug ripped out from under you and fall flat on your face you know find the right investor for you financial advisor, I should say, and don't think you know everything because those guys know how to do it. But, uh, you know, something like this with uh, the chat, uh, the GPT, they'll give you a good idea. And if you can ask the good question, like I was able to, uh, the panic and in investment alterations, that is a good way of, a lot of people don't think about that, but that's the kind of thing where too many people Put their money out there and have it there for a month or two and see it not going the way they want it to and they get it out quick after it's lost its value too much they don't think about the fact that well it lost it now but it could be coming up unless they put it all in one spot and then it's just going to disappear if they put it across the board in different spots some of the some will disappear but others will come up tom it, what value did you find um in working with chat GBT for this exercise. In other words, you're, you're smart. You already are educated in this arena. Did you learn something new or did you get a different spin that you weren't, uh, didn't realize before until you use this chat GBT? Well, I, I had a pretty good idea of, of how to do it already. And that's why I have the financial advisor because I don't know where to put the monies, but I do know that the, the idea of how to invest is what this was telling me, that you don't put it all in one spot, you spread it out. How you spread it out or where you're supposed to spread it, I don't know exactly which ones are the right, right places to put it. 
And that's why I go to the financial advisor because he's the guy that knows where to be putting the stuff. Okay, but that wasn't what I was asking about the actual function. I'm talking about you use ChatGBT. Did you learn anything new by utilizing it? Well, it gave me good definitions of why I'm doing it properly. Okay. You know, it, it, it explained to me that that I'm doing it correctly. Oh, so you it's basically to reassure you. Yeah. Is what you got out of it that you're you're following the right program, if you will. Yes, it, it showed good. me or told me that I'm doing it correctly. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't go out to it and say, well, where should I put my monies? But it told me that the right way to do it is not put it in one or two spots, but put it in multiple places, not telling you where, but in multiple spots, some that will you know, move drastically and some that won't, and then don't go out there and panic at it. Of course, that was my understanding. You don't do any kind of panic because the markets change drastically. Did you try to have the software actually come up with an investment scenario? As for where to put it? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. where to put it. No, no, I did not. Okay. I wouldn't trust it for that. No, no, no. I'm not saying you actually would follow through. This is strictly is it for educational purposes, which is what chat GBT is. It's for educational purposes. It's it's not meant to be in an investment guide platform by no means. I was just wondering if you gave it the exercise, say, I have X number of dollars, whatever. You could pick a million dollars even yeah. back you don't have. It doesn't matter. And, and I want to invest in the market. Where would I tell it to go today? But I'll, I will add this caveat to your to this perspective here. Chat GBT would not be the right platform to ask that question because the data in it is no is not new. It's uh, what three years old, two and a half years old, um, versus something like Bard, which is uh, what is that Google's version of ChatGPT is tied into the current database. It's tied into the World Wide Web. Bard, you may be able to ask it that question. Where should I invest my money today and see what it comes up with? Okay, well, I don't know that I trust that either, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> trust is, trust has to be earned. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's see. I'm going to um, share the screen and I'm going to ask Bard that question. Let's see. Um, I have uh, uh, let's say quarter of a million dollars. One, two, three, to invest in the stock market. Are you typing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Where should... Ah. How should it be invested? Ah, how should... Thank you. punctuation let's see what bard comes up with uh, determine your goals develop a plan choose your investments <laughs> yeah. uh, but it oh you know, it's given me a sample Older. portfolio okay 50 percent in eft's um and 25 percent in international EFTs and 25% bond EFTs. Oh, there was stock, yeah. Um, interesting perspective. It didn't tell you, it does give you a couple of suggestions such as VTI as a stock market EFT and VXUS. Uh, oh, that's um, Vanguard. That's a Vanguard fund, I think. And I'm not sure what the BND is. Well, that's, that's for bonds. It's a bond, right? Such as bond, BND. Yeah. And that basically is telling you 
the ones that are, uh, I can't tell you what each characters are talking about, but I can tell you that they're talking with the percentages, the ones that are more stable than others. The 50% ones are probably the ones that are very stable and the ones in the, the 25 area are the ones that are more volatile. All right, so now I upped it to a million dollars. <laughs> They'll probably still give you the same hey, percentages. Talk is cheap. <laughs> and you're right, it does. It did the well, there's a little difference there at the bottom. Up, go down a little bit. You probably have another five percent. <laughs> uh you're right. Yeah. There's five percent in real estate. Oh. Look at that. Okay, so now. I'm going to ask, uh, did my screen switch to chat GBT? Yes. Okay. I have one, one, two, three. I can't see. One, two, three, to invest. Oh. We can spread it amongst uh, the rest of us. Okay. You could probably tell you the same thing. It's not telling you exactly where, but it'll tell you the style of. Much slower response times. Yeah. Okay, so this is giving you all the list of things, the do's and don'ts. <laughs> Similar to what you had come up with, Tom. But wow. chat, chat GBT did not tell you where to put it. Yeah, it's giving them the, uh, 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 basically uh, some of the same points that Tom uh, uh, mentioned. Right. So this is... I guess it shows the uh, difference between um, ChatGBT and Bard in how they adapted it or adopted it or, you know, ported it over. Interesting. Yeah, and I, I guess that's the, the thing in my head was the way Bard told you is what I was thinking already, how you spread it out over the most volatile and the least volatile, you spread your money across and that's even the way I work it. I, I told my financial advisor to do it that way and he agreed that's the way to do it. You know, he was going to be telling me that. Okay. You know, and he liked that I knew that much already. Well, that's good. Show him you're smart. Yeah, of course I have worked for banks. That's that helps. How about adding over. a modifier to your question? Go ahead. Um, with a uh, put in a qualification that you want a return of uh, eight percent. Ah, all right. So now I will go to Bard and say I want a return of eight percent at least of at least eight percent annual yes okay see what bard does with this they will say get a divorce <laughs> Are you guys are seeing this? Oh no, you're not. I'm not sharing oh, my no. screen. Sorry, my yeah, bad. Share screen. Sorry, I thought. Let me get there. Okay, so this is what it came back with. Um, you need to invest in a portfolio. Generate high returns, index fund. So it's it's giving you a little more detail, but still, it's not telling you specifically where to put it. Well, it did say Dow Jones there. Yes. Well, it says S&P 500. 
Yeah, uh, S and P five hundred or Dow Jones uh, Industrial right. Average. You're right. It does say or the DJ. And it added real estate could be a good way to generate high returns. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on the type of real estate. Uh, uh, right now, um, if you take yeah. downtown Chicago, uh, uh, the vacancy rate in uh, commercial buildings, you might say it was a, a bad investment if you didn't get out uh, uh, earlier. Anyone else got any other question to ask? Bard? Oh, this was good. Has anyone else played around with ChatGBT or Bard for these type of exercises in the last month? I've used uh, uh, only uh, Claude, and I use it uh, because uh, it's supposed to be uh, uh, a pretty good product to try and uh, uh, ask computer and technical and how-to questions. And I've gotten some good uh, uh, advice back. Mind you, uh, there's no absolute, but uh, one uh, vexing problem I had with a computer, it gave me six answers. So I did number one, two, and three. I didn't want to do four. And uh, one, two, and three did nothing. Uh, then I tried uh, five and six. They did nothing. So I had to bite the bullet and try number four that I didn't really want to do. It worked. Yes, so you never know how it's going to work out. And you might not necessarily like what it's advising because uh, uh, it can get a little uh, geeky and a little chancy, etc. But that's where backups come in to begin with. So if you can... Uh, uh, if you have a recent backup and or you uh, uh, can create a backup beforehand, uh, you should be A-OK, -okay, as long as you know how to restore that backup. So that's, uh, 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 AIs can have their place. It depends upon um, how up to date they are and uh, the type of question you ask. Certain questions you ask are uh, uh, going to give you a greater chance of uh, uh, them, so to speak, lying or uh, uh, dreaming up an answer that uh, uh, you might uh, take as fact. But as a whole, uh, they do a pretty good job. Now, is Bard updated more than Chat GPT? Uh, Bard that I know of is uh, separate. They're not part of uh, GPT like Microsoft is, okay? And there are uh, uh, at least two running versions of Chat GTP, 3.5, which is, I think, uh, still used for general public access, and version 4 that cost a lot of money like uh, Microsoft is using, but Bard is, uh, uh, took a completely different approach and used all their wealth of uh, mind information over decades to educate Bard with. So they do have different approaches. Okay, it comes down to the more generalized the question, the more generalized the answer you're going to get. So if you're going to have to focus more sharply if you want a more accurate answer. Yes. Can, sure. Yeah, and you can just keep re-asking question after question to refine the response to get with so to get it in the direction you want, and that that's generally how it works. Period. Um, I, I will add that. Chat GBT is not connected to the internet in the sense that it is not connected up to live data from the internet versus BARD actually is tied into live data from the internet. That's the difference between the two platforms. So if you, like when I ask 
chat GBT about investing in a specific stock or something like that. It can't tell me any of the performance ratios or anything about it because its database is old. It's outdated. And, you know, that's our, that's a known statement versus BARD will probably tie you into more current information that should be available in real time. But I don't know this for a fact about the real time. I just am surmising that. But I do know that it's tied into more current information. So far, what I've seen appears to be that it works, chat works very well if you have tech, uh, all kinds of text and you want it to be better organized and uh, use better grammar and all that kind of stuff. It seems to do a good job with that. I haven't seen much of anything other than some references from some of the investment companies uh, about what how they can get a better focus on numbers. It, they're 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 grasping, and they're all coming up with their own solutions anyway. So, well, since we're on the topic of uh, uh, AIs, uh, I saw an article today that. Uh, um, Microsoft CEO uh, Nadella uh, gets honest about Bing's chances against Google. And uh, offhand, uh, Nadella says, uh, uh, Google's dominance of online search is hurting Bing, per se, uh, from uh, Wall Street Journal report. The CEO spoke as a witness in the Justice Department's antitrust trial against Google. Bing is struggling to compete with Google, even uh, with a, a new AI developments. So uh, unless, I guess, the government uh, is uh, pretty successful against uh, in the antitrust case against Google, uh, some of the other outfits, like even Microsoft, are uh, questioning how well uh, uh, they will be able to compete against uh, uh, Google. So we'll have to take and uh, wait and see how that works out. There's the thing in the Woody's that just came out about Copilot that they're bringing out right. and to put in. Microsoft and that they're going to be right now, it's going to be very selective about who gets, they use it and uh, they try to work their way in to find out where they can, where they can place it to make the most use and is make it work successful. Yes. Uh, along that line, and I want to uh, uh, do a, a little bit of a, a PSA, um, within the last couple of weeks at meetings, um, I had uh, mentioned uh, that uh, uh, there was uh, uh, supposed to be a September 26th uh, release of 23H2, which I thought very odd. And then uh, on uh, the uh, 25th and 26th, stories came out that, oh, it's not 23H2. It is momentum number four. Momentum one, two, and three, and this now four, are all new enhancements to uh, uh, Microsoft's products in 11. And uh, uh, so that means next Tuesday, the normal uh, second Tuesday of the month, they'll pro uh, probably release 23H2. Uh, Copilot is uh, uh, going to only be available, like uh, Harry said, uh, uh, to a small percentage of people until they can figure out uh, where it fits in best. And then they'll uh, uh, make it a release to everybody in a future monthly update. But uh, uh, next Tuesday, you'll get uh, uh, the basic uh, uh, last 22H2 updates. And either within that will be the 23H2 update or they will have the 23H2 update as a separate item, but you have to uh, do the 22H2 updates first, then you can uh, uh, do the 23H2. That's the way they've been doing it last several years. So uh, 
that's the likely release date. Uh, if they don't release 23H2 on uh, uh, next Tuesday, it may be uh, uh, towards the end of the month or uh, November's uh, second Tuesday that it releases it. Might want to do a delay on updates for a couple of weeks or so and see what's happening. Well, uh, 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 there are a lot of people that practice that. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, wait. I only usually wait uh, uh, on some systems uh, up to a week, and other systems uh, I will update right away to see if I find a problem. So oh. it, but that's me, and that's with multiple systems. Tim, you mentioned Copilot. You want to explain what Copilot is? Uh if you guys remember from way back, Clippy, that was part of Microsoft operating system for a while, this assistant co-pilot is basically replacing Clippy as an AI assistant to try and increase your productivity. I haven't really followed all the details of uh, uh, co-pilot. Uh, I do get a lot of information, but uh, uh, at the same time too, uh, anything I've read so far, odds are I'm not going to be that interested in uh, uh, using uh, uh, Copilot myself, but it's going to vary person to person. You've got uh, uh, eight people at this meeting right now. You might have eight different uh, 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 opinions of Copilot and what you're going to uh, uh, individually do with it. And we all are individuals, so uh, we're going to do our own thing. Right now, I haven't seen anything to make me, uh, shall we say, uh, wanting and waiting for Copilot uh, uh, to land on my systems. Okay. So we're going to have this little gizmo up on our desktop now, like a little clippy thing? Uh, that's the way it sounds. Now, uh, uh, hopefully it's something that uh, you can disable if you don't want it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, even if, let's assume that uh, uh, they make it uh, uh, so that you can't normally do that. I guarantee you somebody out there will figure out how to disable that thing without uh, uh, doing more damage. And uh, uh, it'll spread like wildfire, I'll bet you. Okay, um, Bob uh, states that uh, uh, Copilot is more of a Cortana replacement. And of course, Clippy, we know, we're just having fun with the term Clippy, but we know it's not Clippy. Well, uh, a, a Cortana replaced Clippy. That was the first replacement of Clippy. And uh, uh, Copilot is going to uh, uh, retire Cortana. So you're in the same vein. All three pieces of software are there to help you in productivity, focusing on something, getting things done better and faster than you might otherwise without it. That's the general premise. Crazy. Yeah, well, uh, uh, you got to understand uh, uh, the high competitiveness of uh, uh, the computer market uh, uh, as is, especially now with AI. Everybody's got to pull, uh, 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 try and pull rabbits out of their hat and uh, hope they keep multiplying. Right. So I don't know what else to tell you on that right now. Uh, until I actually see it and uh, uh, find out exactly uh, how this uh, little sucker is going to work. Because, uh, yeah, it sounds uh, like it has uh, some potential promise, but it depends on each individual. How do you do things? So it either gets in your way or uh, you uh, uh, shut it off if you can and or you will use the hell out of it. And, and it all depends on your use your use needs. Right. Uh, uh, that's, consider that's that right. most of us are not no longer in the um, active job market where we utilize our computers for everyday 
business operations and communicating with other coworkers and doing production on there, uh, it really won't affect us very much. We could be more of casual observers uh, versus somebody who's entrenched in it on a daily basis. Uh, cool. So I guess it's a matter of wait and see how the young people who don't come to our meetings, boo hoo, uh, we'd love to get their input on how something like this, that does it work for them? Does it not work for them? What do they do with it? Or do they just ignore it and, and keep going, trudging the way forward every day and trying to get their production done that they need to do? Well, the other thing there is uh, uh, what segments of computer usage used Clippy and thought it was of value. Then when it uh, was replaced with Cortana, how many uh, people were really using it? What segments were using it uh, uh, for uh, a positive uh, usage? And that would lend itself into a uh, co-pilot, what is likely to be the main uh, users of that product. So uh, right now, I don't have a feel for it. Anyone else want to comment? Well, at the moment, uh, uh, I, okay. I got to so change the topic. Shall we go on to new topics, new, new direction? And please, every, anyone want to step up? Anyone got questions? Uh, okay, because we don't have a topic for tonight. We don't, we're open forum the whole night. So I would like to ask, um, what are you using your computer for? We, we kind of alluded to this. So uh, Wayne, I'll start with you. What do you use your computer for? I'm mainly for emails because I'm uh, involved in several clubs and church. And so uh, I I do a lot of emailing, mm -hmm. and then of course I I'm treasurer for one of my clubs, so I've got software on there that I have to to run for invoicing and paying bills and that sort of thing. Okay. All right, and so then I, what about I, when you're not using it for things like that? What are you using it for yourself to do? Well, then I use my iPad for checking all my emails okay all right so you your ipads for your consumption and your pc is for production right okay. yeah because i because i've got half a dozen emails and, and and having them on the pc is a royal pain and on the ipad it's so simple i just check from one to the other and i got them all set up so i just click from one one email address to another Okay. Bob Baxter, can you tell me what you use your machine for, your PC? Certainly, be glad to. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm retired for 18 years now. So, uh, uh, I use it for a, for a variety of things. I'm involved in several things. Uh, there are church activities. I'm the secretary and treasurer of our local club called Kegs K E G S. Uh, and uh, so I do uh, club work there. I uh, uh, have communications to do about activities at church. Um, uh, I support my wife in what she does with her computer. Um, uh, I used to do a lot of video, but with the advent of what they've done with iPhones, uh, it just isn't worth my effort. People are very happy with their little clips that they make. And uh, that's fine. I'd get two or three cameras out and and I did some I did several weddings. I don't like weddings. I don't mind doing funerals. I don't like the atmosphere, but uh, some people have enjoyed having a copy of the service to send to other people. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to put those things together. Sure. Um, uh, I have my first digital camera was around 2001. Uh, I've got probably three terabytes of pictures that I save. Uh, I'm not real good about that because I save all the originals. Uh, 
And then in a separate file, I save the ones that I have edited and scaled them down to the ones that I think are worth something. If I lose the originals, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so um, let's see. Uh, I use Quicken. Uh, I was sort of an independent consultant for a while and decided it wasn't worth my efforts. And I used, uh, what was it, QuickBooks for that. Uh, but that's more than what I need for what I do. I do the books for the club. Uh, and uh, I bought them Quicken. Uh, and uh, I do that. Uh, I assisted our treasurer for a while, but he has a medical issue and he's on leave of absence. So I've taken that over entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I do a lot of email. Um, I'm a I'm a list person. I make a lot of lists, organize things. Uh, I use Excel a lot. Uh, I I escaped typing school, so I don't type a lot. Uh, so my notes can be a little a little short. But, uh, yeah, uh, when I was getting well years ago, I figured out that uh, there's some money to be made in the stock market, but I don't know how to do it. And uh, I knew somebody who was in that business and worked for an independent type of company. Uh, and uh, so I would try to follow the stock market and see what was going on. And the web was very helpful in that. Um, I did learn in that process that there are two different classes of people that will help you. There are people who sell you a product and there are people who are fiduciaries who have your best interest at hand. And that's the kind of people you want to have helping you. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm sure I do it. Well, I do physical things with computers. Uh, I'm in the process of, uh, dropping my windows 2012 server that uh, backs up all my pictures and videos and other important things because it's getting old and I'm, uh, learning, uh, Linux Proxmox. Uh, to build a virtual machine and to add their uh, virtual backup system and see where that goes. So uh, I have a meeting in about an hour to uh, go further on that with our with our club group. Uh, I uh, spent several hours this last week uh, configuring a couple of computers to support that activity. And uh, so that's a different aspect of using the computer. I know Tim does a lot of physical work with computers, and I'm sure most of you get your hands dirty on those as well. Does that give you a rough idea? It sure does. So is that Windows Home Server 2012 or just Windows Server you were using? I started with Home Server, and that was like version one and two and maybe three, and then it went away. Uh huh. So around 2012, I gave up on that and got the 2012 version of Windows Office or Windows Server. Okay, uh, and it's 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 not fully uh, supported anymore. So I need to move on, and I'm using the same HP uh, machine that I started with on that, and it's getting tired. Well, that's pr that's pretty good. That you're still rocking a server though at home. Yes, yes. You're you're not alone. I'm still rocking a server too. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm still using home server version two so I didn't wow. that. um but that's i also have 41 terabytes on storage on there too <laughs> uh i only got five or six terabytes so you're way yeah. ahead of me yeah no I, I i basically took all my videos and uh everything i digitized everything and threw it on the server and, and that's just the way i operate it's this way i could get rid of a lot of hard physical like tapes and DVDs and stuff like that and just purge it and get rid of that out of the house. Uh, I did that with all my pictures, negatives, mm -hmm. slides. Scanned uh, them all. Several years ago, scanned them all. That yep. I did that too. And that's that's a daunting pro process to I was I was lucky through the club I was able to get a very good deal on a Nikon film sir, uh, scanner. It would have retailed for somewhere around a thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, and uh, I got them all done and I thought I was done with that machine. And recently I had need to use it and I don't think it functions anymore. Oh, so and unfortunately this... we're in the process of trying to move ourselves out of this huge house that the two of us live in 
and I have found a couple of boxes of uh, negatives or slides that uh, missed the scanning process. So mm -hmm. I'm figuring out what I'm going to do with that. I okay. got one of the iPhone gadgets that lets you take a picture, and that just doesn't work for me. <laughs> it's one at a time. Boom, boom. Yeah, it's one at a time, and it's yeah, it's it just it's not the same thing. Um. Okay. So. Um... All right. Thank you, Bob. You really helped a lot. Tom O'Connor, why don't you tell us what you do at your PC? Probably not enough. Mm. Uh, I, I work a lot with uh, family pictures. Boy, do they go way back. Uh, I've done a lot with them, and I have a heck of a lot more to do. I do have a, a negative scanner that I haven't used yet. I sure hope it works. It's an antique, but I sure hope it works. Uh, and when I scan pictures, I don't do one at a time. I put them on a flat scanner and put probably six or eight pictures on at once and scan it that way. And then I do a, a, a little bit of editing and cut them down to size. And then I have a picture, you know, one picture to work with that way. Uh, so, th so you take the, this, the, the scan image that has, let's say, half a dozen photos on there, and then you break them apart into their yeah. subsets? Okay. Yeah, I, I would not do one at a time. I'm not crazy. <laughs> so then I, I then I do, you know, cropping of them to get one at a time. So uh, that makes it much easier, but I still have thousands of pictures to do that way. And I don't know what the negatives are. So hopefully this scanner will work, but I don't know. I haven't got to that point yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, that will be one of the major functions I'll do in my life, but we'll find out. Uh, other than that, with the, the PC, I, I like to interface with a lot of people. Uh, and I'll tell you, I just tripped over something on this machine that I never knew I had. Uh, and that was uh, in uh, Gmail. I had, I guess, the standard uh, what I would think is standard of uh, four or five items like inbox and uh, I don't know what you call it, just spam and trash and things like that. Those, you know, five or six items that were sitting there that I'd always be looking at. And there was always something down there that was, uh, I think categories was what it was called. And I never opened it up to see what it was. Well, just recently I opened it up and it, knocked me on my butt. I, I changed that because we're being recorded. But uh, <laughs> boy, did I find a lot of stuff in there. And uh, I've been going through that lately. But uh, other than that, uh, when I have uh, found that I could get out to Facebook, I've got a lot of stuff in here. I've almost never used Facebook, but I have had it. And uh, People have been sending me a lot of stuff in Facebook, so I have a lot of real good pictures of family members, and I have a lot of good jokes that I've been able to send out to people. And, you know, it's, I don't know what to say. I, I enjoy working with pictures. I, I take a lot of myself. And uh, that's one thing I miss about our club on uh, this particular uh what can I say? I, one of the offshoots of this, because I used to get around into our club. I, I don't drive, so I can't get out that way. And since our digital club went away, I, I don't get a lot of pictures that way. But uh, what can I say? I, we did have fun. Oh, we did. Yeah. We did have fun while it lasted. Oh yeah. And I, I have uh, some of my best pictures of the the real moon <laughs> put it that way but uh yeah you know being out in the country taking those kind of pictures is great being in the city well they get a little blurred especially when canada's burning up but, tom uh, what what's you mentioned that you're you got your soft you got your photos you scan them and then you manipulate it what software are you using to do that with oh uh, what do you call it from view, I believe is what you call it. Okay. Yeah, that's what it's called. Here from view 64. Okay. 
Is that a new or is that a retired product? I don't remember. Well, it, it's an older product. I don't know. It's a current level of it, but I don't know how old it is. Okay. And, uh, and you find that that works very well for you? Oh, very good. Okay. I, I'd, always, I'd always move up to something else if it wasn't doing a good job for me, but it, it does an excellent job. So I, I keep it. I do have a few other things I used to use to make cards. And right now, for some reason, I even have the, the CDs that came with, and it's just not working. It's called Print Artist Platinum. <laughs> I had that product too. <laughs> Any idea why it doesn't work? No, I haven't. Mine I archived a long time ago and got rid of it. I haven't used it since my kids grew up uh, because I used to use it just to make greeting cards. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I have no idea. It's probably, oh, it, it's probably because it could have been a 32-bit product or even as low as a 16-bit. Uh, and that could be that it won't run on a current machine. Okay. If I don't know. I don't know how many bit it was, but I would say most likely it falls in a 32 bit category, but could even be a 16 bit. Boy, that'd be really ancient if that, that was the case. Um, but that would be your problem. Your your hold back on that. Yeah. May I interject a comment? Yes. Go ahead. This is Bob again. So, uh, Tom, there's a there's a group out there that I would suggest to you. Uh, it's called Get Set Up. It's a it's a web based system. If you Google that, you should get the link to it. Uh, if not, uh, let me know. Um, they run a whole gamut of of meetings online, and they have a couple of groups that work on photographs. They have a couple of groups that work on tech. Um, and if you go to their site. They have a beautiful setup there. They have them broke their classes broken up into all kinds of things. You can do exercise, you can do cooking, you can just all sorts of stuff. And there's a category there for technology and one for photography. And the one I like, I think meets on Fridays, every other Friday, something like that. And uh, ahead of time, they will post a topic and they have a couple dozen people who will attend each session. And they will present some pictures and the leader of the group will present those one at a time and let the person who presented talk about them and let discuss things they might have done uh, to, yeah, there's get set up, uh, to uh, get the picture the way it was, frame it, uh, uh, tools they use to edit it. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a good group. So uh, I encourage anybody who wants to get into photographs or if you need some more tech stuff beyond what we get from our clubs, uh, their tech sessions can be pretty good too. I have five ways to take your salad to the next level. What, what's wrong with that? Right. <laughs> well, thank you. A, a thank wide you. variety of things. There's a, up at the top there, there's a uh, section that says that it's uh, categories. And if you click on the categories, then it tells you the two dozen different categories they have and you see just those classes. You're looking at one that lists all the class and you click a button and you reserve uh, a, a place in the meeting. Uh, they ask you to join. There's no cost involved. It's all free. Um, but yeah, that's, it's good. Um, AARP has another similar sort of group uh, called Senior Planet. And uh, they have a similar sort of arrangement and they put on sessions that you can join and have discussions around things. And they have some on photography and they have some on technology. Okay. And I'm sure they have others, but they're not in my camp. And here's seniorplanet.org. Yes, that's it. Yep. Oh, my Thank screen. you. Uh-oh. Can you guys see me? Okay. Yes, I see uh, my screen just went blank, and I suspect it's something that that site was doing. So I got. Well, you're still projecting the image of the site. Just so you know, I cannot see my desktop at all. So. Well, we can see you. You can see can me see here. You, we can see yours. All right. It's well, I am literally locked out of my desktop and cannot see anything. Um, uh oh. 
Yeah. Uh, so I cannot even stop sharing this, oh. this desktop. I'm trying everything. Let's see if the, trip, the three finger salute does task manager. And uh, see if I could just shut down Firefox. Maybe that might do it. Let me stop. Oh, I could stop sharing. There you go. There you go. Okay, good. I got this back. I don't know what's with that site. See if I can close that. Oh, it's the site for sure. <laughs> now, the minute I went to that site to try to close that tab, it just knocked out my screen. So um, I got to try to see if I can go there and close it immediately. Now, that was Bob Baxter I was talking to there showing it, right? That is correct. Okay, Bob, thank you. All right. All right. So that's for whatever reason, I've seen this pop up before where you go to a, a URL and something happens with it and Zoom, and the two just don't mesh. And I suspect it could be because they might have a, a video that pops up. Sometimes all of these sites, they have videos that pop up. If that could be the situation, I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm back. Sorry, I didn't mean to get disarrayed there. Uh, that was, what was that site? It was uh, Senior... Senior Planet. Senior Planet. Senior Planet. Somehow that's a, a piece of AARP, for whatever that means to you. Dash A. AARP is a nice place. It's primarily an insurance company, but that's beside the point. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, let's go to Bob Primack. Bob, you want to tell us how you use your PCs? Well, I a lot of what I do is email and uh, surfing the web. And I sometimes I will do things like I uh, watch TV or stream video. I I do a lot of my stuff in Linux because I first of all. A lot of the places that like to show all these ads, like the one that crashed your system, those don't work very well in Linux. So I get very much less interference. I, Linux can be more stable, although it has its moments. And I, I have also done some hardware things lately. When my Chromebook expired, I physically took it apart, took out the right protect screw and turned it into a Linux uh, laptop. So I do some hardware stuff. I, although I don't like doing hardware stuff, that's really not my thing. I, I, most of the rest of what I do with my computers has to do with setting up by uh, maintenance, backup, things of that nature. I have many, many terabytes of backup and I have quite a few Linux installations all inside of one enclosure. I, so yeah, that, Keeps me pretty busy. Sounds like you like to do a lot of um, tool tooling around with different scenarios. Like you'll set up a Linux to do something and don't like it and try something else. Could that be the case? Fitting the right tool to the right job. Right, right. And that tool, it could extend to choosing a different operating system. Okay. Yeah, you're willing to experiment. Some of us won't do that. I don't have a uh, don't have a desire or a, a need to go down the Linux route, although I see the benefits in it. It's just another thing to clog up this brain that's already clogged up and developing a lot of Swiss cheese holes in it at the same time. So anyways, uh, shall we move on? Tony Edwards, who's, who's, he is just, he's on his phone and I don't know, he's probably picking the next best win at a game or gambling or something. What are you doing, Tony, on your phone? Taking notes, sir. <laughs> Taking notes. Yeah. That's a diplomatic. diplomatic. Exactly. What do you use your PC or your computer for? Because I think you're on a Mac, aren't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us what you use your Mac for. So, cotton picking in an apple orchard. No, I <laughs> do a lot of research and yeah, mostly technology and medical field and different things. And so what are the latest uh, pharmaceuticals out there, for example, or what are the latest things for senior citizens who are having problems with, from ailments to pains and other things. So I do a lot of research in that in that regard. And then I also have a uh, program that we do about 
family and uh, being purposeful in your life. And as a grandfather of 11 kids, I try to get information that will assist them. And I actually discovered recently, I only have one grandson, 11 grandchildren, all of them are girls. And this kid is six years old. And I went to visit him recently, a couple of weeks ago in Cincinnati. He calls me Papu. He says, Papu. He goes to his room, he comes back. And within five minutes, he comes back with a drawing and some animation things attached to it and stuff. And he says, look at this. And he turns it around. So what I plan to do with him is to get him in um, in the NASA summer camp in, in Huntsville, Alabama next year. So I'm planning to get him there because he is... He's going to go to the moon. Kid is awesome, and he had, that keeps me occupied. But but rather than that, besides that, for the last several months, I just to update you. I was in the hospital since the 9th of January, and I'm here now with you guys. It's good, and I've had surgery a couple of times, and um, I hope they don't do any more. And I'm just recuperating, and so this is my first visit in a long time. And everybody looks good. Uh, a uh, a suggestion, Tony, um, to help you in your endeavor on finding stuff to do uh, in relationship to NASA mm. is there is a podcast that NASA puts on. It's called Houston. We have a podcast. Mm. And uh, this po particular podcast, um, they interview and they go through a lot of things that are going on at NASA. They interview uh, it could be the astronauts that are going up to the space station, or it could be the directors of a specific department. It could be the people in charge of uh, some of the engineering teams. What they do during these podcasts is ask almost every person that they interview, how'd you get here? What did you do? What programs are available? And they even had some podcasts that are deal with the STEMS programs. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, it, this really encompasses a lot of arenas to, um, get people in, interested in becoming employed or involved with NASA itself. And that's why I mentioned this, because it may give you a template along to use or to present and say, you know, if this, this grandson does this, this, and this, and communicates this way, he could get into NASA easily. And it's relatively easy to do. It's just having the right uh, template or a uh, roadmap, if you will, to follow on how to get there. Check this this podcast out. It'll take you a while to get through them because they got a lot of them that they do. But again, they're interviewing tons of people on there mm -hmm. and giving you some good information on how they got to where they are. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, got, I, I like that fresh uh Perspective, I appreciate it. The okay. um, reason why I know just very little about NASA is because one of my nephews, he was the EEOC guy at NASA down at Huntsville. And he used to go to different schools trying to recruit people and encourage them to know what his space program is about. It's not everybody going to space, but the ancillary and supportive environments, you know, that created it. Go ahead. Oh, it's it's huge. And NASA, again, like you said, not, not everyone goes to space, but they need tons of people to support and come up with the engineering ideas. And they specifically are looking for young people. They mm -hmm. want young, smart brains to come up with the things that they don't know, the things that they need to figure out. That's mm -hmm. what they're looking for, creative ideas. So Hope that helps. It's called Houston. We have a podcast and you can get that on Apple um, or wherever you go and get podcasts. Great job. Outstanding. I appreciate it. All right. And let's uh, move yes, over. Question. Go ahead. Is, is there any truth to the news that I've just tripped over about uh, something in 2025 or 26 that might be uh, living on the moon? I heard about something being built on the moon for a, an environment with people, people with uh, the astronauts moving out onto the moon. Yeah, the Chinese are talking about that now. <laughs> Chinese, yeah. 
Um, it was supposed I, to be an American thing, but I believe the U the U.S. is moving in that direction, but I don't know about it being ready in two years. Well, that, that was two or three years. That is not going to happen two or three years. I thought it was more like 2040 that they were envisioning that to happen, that we'd be able to, to have a presence physically living on the moon, but I, you know, it could be before then. Um, they are on the roadmap to putting people on the moon as a place to live with the Artemis uh, mission. And they go through on these podcasts, they walk through each one of the components of the Artemis missions. That is to put in a stable platform that's going to be um, in orbit around the moon. And then they'll have the uh, capsules that go up and down from that orbital station down to the to the earth, to the moon, and then come back up. And then there'll be a different capsule that will take the astronauts from earth to the to the space station and back and forth. So they're gonna be setting that kind of scenario up. Are they gonna be building buildings up there? You know, they're, they're figuring this out as they go. I don't know. I don't know if they're, I don't know the answer to your question, Tom. Okay, well, I'll have to try and find that thing again and maybe show it to you guys because it, it, was, would, it, it was showing it. <laughs> on that Houston, we have a podcast. They go through all those scenarios. Um, they broke it down into the various components and subcomponents. They've also discussed in there uh, how we'll get to Mars, what's involved on getting to Mars. And they broke it down to uh, the transporting of the astronauts from Earth to Mars. What's that going to take? And then when you get to Mars in orbit around Mars, what kind of equipment's needed for that? And then to live on Mars, how is that going to work? What kind of equipment's they go through that on these podcasts. They break it down, but it doesn't get technical. It's it's not overly technical by no means. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so um in the same set of news stories, I saw something that was talking about how the rings around Saturn were starting to fail because uh, two of the the ice moons collided. Okay, so I, I was trying to trying to believe it, but there was too much in that. I'm thinking, wait a second, that there's too much here. Mm. And it was a, a newscast that was coming to me through through the internet, through you know a news thing that I get all the time. And I'm thinking, wait a second, this is too much. Right. But I'll keep watching it. If something does come out again, I can relay it to you folks and, and keep it and let you sure. see it. But Okay, I'll shut up. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Harry Nelson, tell us what you use your PC for, Harry. Um, email like everybody else. Yeah. I use Quicken for financial budgeting, watching investments and then I also spend I've got basically I have three computers one upstairs one that's my wife supposedly and one I have downstairs and then the laptop which kind of has to be a backup for everything to make sure that if I don't lose too many things when things quit working and then do the maintenance on those and I don't spend as much time with the computer as I used to I'm get cabin fever too often i start working on things in the morning and then i've got to get out of the house and go somewhere even if it doesn't have much purpose but um, and i still have two or three activities a week that i participate in which take most of a day so it's uh and I have the iPad, which is kind of always by the chair when I'm sitting, even if I'm sitting in front of the TV, because that's my answer, man, for many things. Or when I think of something I want to look up or I can just pick it up and grab it and put the question in and see if I get an answer that I'm looking for. The truck, truck's been giving me problems off and on, so I've been using YouTube on there to answer some questions. Uh, even I take it to places to be worked on and sometimes I don't always get the answer that I think I should get so I have to do a little research of my own to back up what they're telling me so it's kind of a general purpose appliance in my house they're all practical, all well, practical that's, purposes. that sounds like a good thing appliances are good 
Uh, you said you were used one for doing backups. How are you doing that? One PC backs up all the others? Um, no, I have a backup on and stuff, but I've got some I've got portable hard drives for backup on each of the two PCs that I'm using. The laptop is is kind of my definite backup. I make sure I copy everything from Quicken on a pretty regular basis, every two or three days to update it and keep it up to date so that if the PC that it's on goes to heaven, why at least I don't lose lose track of where my money went. Sure, sure. Uh, it goes fast enough without without losing track of it. So, Tim, did you have a question? It. What's that? Tim, did you have a question? No. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Bob Baxter was leaving. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm sorry, Eric. Please continue. No, that's about it. That covers pretty much everything. Okay. Um, Jim Freeburn. Uh, is Jim there? Well, maybe Jim will come back in a bit. So who, oh, did we got everybody? Oh, Terry Moy. Oh, Terry, well, well, Terry, well, oh, wait, Jim, Jim's chiming in. Hold on, Jim. That's fine. Jim, can you tell us what you use your PC for? We can't hear you, Tim or Jim, we can't hear you. I know you're That's not using does that sound better? Yes, thank you. I plugged it in, but I didn't turn it on. That's okay. I'm getting ready to go on vacation next week. And so <laughs> I have all this stuff all over here that I'm trying to get organized and straight away before we go on vacation. So I'm a, a little cluttered and frustrated. Um, so a big, big email user, also uh, surfing the web, um, a combination of um, as I think that was Harry was talking about, uh, home maintenance activities, a lot of, uh, YouTube for things that go wrong in my house and things that happen at my daughter's house. Um, and then when I, when I read things in the newspaper, I often go off trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So I'm using the web to sort of research some of that stuff. Uh, I'm another one who does a lot of my own financial stuff. So I do some exploring of uh, uh, various companies and investments and keeping track of my own stuff and those kind of things. And uh, January through April is uh, tax time for me. I'm not an accountant, but I'm a volunteer tax pre um, preparer in two different organizations. One of them AARP and the other is a, a VITA operation at Loaves and Fishes. So I'm about uh, four days a week of uh, tax preparation stuff. And I'm one of the uh, experts in both groups on how the tax program actually works on the computer. And for the AARP stuff, we use Chromebooks. So I also get to be a semi-expert on how the Chromebooks work, at least for the things that we have to do. Um, and so I have a lot of uh, Microsoft Office stuff. And that's about it. Well, that's a lot of stuff. How do you, what software do you guys use for tax preparation? We use something called Tax Slayer. Each uh, the IRS signs up uh, for five-year contracts with different people who do uh, tax software. And the year before I started doing it, they signed up with this outfit, Tax Slayer. They've had them for, they're on their second five-year stint, I think. And Tax Slayer has um, a couple of different versions that you can use. And they have one that uh, uh, I think they have some adaptations for uh, for AARP because AARP has some variations on some of the stuff that they'll do versus other um, volunteer tax groups. Thank you. Now you said you also did it Loaves and Fishes that does uses the same software. Yep. 
Okay. Well, the there there are a couple of groups that do volunteer tax stuff that's tied directly to the IRS, and they all, as far as I can tell, pretty much are required to use this one tax program. Okay. Okay. And thank you very much. We'll let you get your head back into organized on getting ready for your vacation. And Jim, where are you going? I'm going to, my wife and I are going to New Mexico. Um, the annual hot air balloon festival started over the past weekend. And we're going to go up and uh, sort of watch part of uh, week two. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law uh, live on the hill that sort of overlooks the venue where they launch the balloons from. So we can sit on their deck in the morning and watch the balloons go up. And then occasionally one comes down a couple of houses <laughs> away or whatever, and you can watch them. It's very interesting watching them take the thing down and fold it all up and put it in the truck and drive away. And then this year, uh, there's an annual eclipse on October the 14th, I think it is. And Albuquerque is on the path. So we're going to be able to uh, watch the eclipse that, that day. Mm -hmm. Well, good. That sounds great. We hope to see some pictures at the uh, at our next West Side meeting oh, next month. I might do that. You could pop them up and show us what some of the pictures you took. That'd be wonderful. All Maybe right. Maybe I'll steal some for my brother-in-law. He's the he's the real photographer. Well, even once you take what your cell phone will work fine. Tim <laughs> Kaikas, can you tell us what you use your PCs for? Well, I just let them sit here and let the uh, let them do their own thing. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm a, a really hardware guy. Uh, um, uh, play with building them, updating them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I have very little brand new stuff. It's mostly uh, uh, seeing what I can uh, keep going and running on old equipment. Uh, I was amazed how many uh, old systems I could run Windows 10 on, as an example. So I'm into the hardware, I'm into uh, uh, the uh, operating system, tools for properly maintaining and backing up the system. Uh, very little in the application stuff. I do uh, a lot of uh, uh, surfing on the web, uh, uh, mining uh, uh, articles, doing research, et cetera. And I put a lot of that into the more FYI postings for over 10 years now. And I uh, uh, take uh, um, very, very little uh, uh, pictures. But recently, uh, I had a neighbor, I had to call 911 on, get an ambulance there. She's not coming back. Uh, and it turns out uh, uh, she's uh, got uh, lymphoma. I don't know if it's large or small cell. Uh, but she's uh, uh, apparently recently where she's at. Uh, um, said something inappropriate happened and they've been investigating that. And uh, now, I guess, uh, uh, as of today, I found out they're going to do a psych evaluation, which I think she would have failed 10 years ago or more. Okay, so let's stick on the subject of what you use your PC for. Well, uh, uh, recently I learned how to uh, uh, do some uh, photo editing that I've never done before. Uh, I used uh, uh, GIMP. I used uh, uh, a lot of YouTube uh, tutorials. And uh, after about six tries, I figured out how to do it because she had seven cats. And they're in their native environment in the house, which is not great background. These cats aren't going to uh, uh, go in front of a screen uh, for uh, photo taking. So what you want to do is cut out the background focus on just the cat, put them on a, a, a solid background of some kind. And that way you have uh, pictures of all the cats that are available for adoption eventually. I will say the iPhone does a stellar job at doing just that. Well, my iPhone is got a dead battery, so right. I can't do that. 
So I uh, uh, have an old uh, Nikon uh, Coolpix I almost forgot about. Uh, it's working fine. It took the pictures, uh, very good high resolution. There are AI programs online that you can use. Free gets you a small snapshot type uh, a sample of what they will do. But if you want uh, 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 the real stuff and higher resolution, HD, they uh, classify it, uh, you have to uh, pay for the service. And it's not necessarily cheap. And for something that's going to be a one-time job, I says that's crazy. So I picked up GIMP. I learned how to use that. And after six tries, I uh, got the knack of it. And I got uh, uh, six out of seven cats. The seventh one, I don't know if I'll ever get the, uh, the picture for that one because it keeps hiding uh, uh, and without uh, literally trying to find where it's hiding and dragging it out, you're not going to get a picture. So those are uh, some of the things I do. And uh, uh, then I support CCS stuff. I do uh, remote uh, uh, help uh, uh, via the computers to other people's computers to uh, help them out with hardware or software problems. Uh, Tom O'Connor here is uh, uh, one example. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of a, a, a case where uh, I do quite a, a menagerie of things. It's mostly a lot of experimentation. Windows, uh, I used to use Mac, but uh, uh, it's obsolete. Uh, I do Linux, Chromebooks. I've converted Chromebooks to Linux, um, things like that. So uh, I'm kind of an experimenter. I uh, try different things out. Um, I'm apprehensive at times with some uh, uh, of the things I try out, but eventually I bite the bullet and I do it anyhow. And uh, so far I've done quite well. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Uh, and I guess that rolls back to me. I'm the last person to discuss. I have six PCs in this house uh, that I manage. Um, one of them its sole job, the it's running Windows 10, and the only thing it does is it displays a slideshow. And what it does is it points to my server and where I have my photos all in a folder, and it just randomly displays all the pictures on my server on a bit on a 22-inch well, screen. It's more or less like those old photo frames that you'd have that you'd buy and put your pictures on. Well, because I have so many tens of thousands, literally, of photos, uh, it's way too many to put on one of those things. So this is what I came up with as a solution. So that's one PC. That's the only thing it does is it displays a fo photo slideshow 24-7. And it just runs in the family room in the background and just displays pictures. Um, and that's using Windows... Uh, slideshow program that's part of the screen saver that's all it does okay so that's one machine uh then the other one is of course my server i mentioned that before that's running windows home server version 2 yes i know it's outdated it needs to go but i just still love that little beast and it just keeps trudging away so that just backs up everything um it uh accumulates a place central location for me to deposit my stuff and then of course i back that all up that's a separate process there with external hard drives and keep those locally as well as offsite. That's two machines. Then I have an old uh, Windows Media Center running Windows 7. I don't turn that on very much. Uh, it's only on when I wanna record something on live TV because I have a digital, an I have a digital antenna, so everything's broadcast in the house digitally and the media center can record that beautifully. However, since we don't have any current TV shows that are running, everything is in reruns, uh, oh. that, that machine just sits off. I have not been using it since last year, but I'm still catching up on some of the shows I never caught up on before. So that's one of them. This machine here, this uh, laptop that I'm on in front of me, this one, um, I use for running the Zoom programs for this. I do a lot of CCS stuff on there. Photo editing is a 
bulk of what I do on here, some video editing. For photo editing, I mainly use, um, uh, got it, had a brain kit, uh, blank here for a second. I'm using uh, uh, Photoshop Elements uh, version 22. Um, I did not buy the, that was the latest that I bought then. So that Photoshop Elements does pretty much everything that I needed to do real quickly. I found it very worthwhile to buy that and to use that product. Uh, what else am I doing? Of course, we all do emails. How about your drone, uh, Stanford? My drone. Now, that one does not use a PC, but I do have uh, a tablet that I hook up to that, an old um, Samsung Tab S, their first version. I use that. Uh, it has a nice eight and a half inch screen. And that is uh, what I watch, what's going on on the drone. When I fly my drone, that's hooked up to the tablet. And when I'm flying around, I can see on a nice big screen exactly where it's pointing at and get all the telemetry from the drone through that display. It's really cool how that works. Um, I also, uh, let's see, so that's that. Um, this one here. And then, of course, uh, I have my wife's machine. She does all of her real estate stuff on there, which is a lot of vertical applications that she's running on, on her particular laptop. Hers is running Windows 10. Uh, but this machine, I need to, she needs to buy a new one. It's time. And she needs a business expense for this coming year. So uh, really? encouraging her to upgrade. Tony, yes. Oh, Tony, Tony muted himself. Uh, so she's doing a lot of Excel, Word, um, and then the vertical stuff that has to do with real estate. And some of the things only run on PCs, they will not run on a Mac for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, I think they has to do with like key cards and getting permission to go, um, DocuSign. I know DocuSign, I think does not matter what platform you're on, um, so I kind of ran down pretty quickly on the applications that I'm using, uh, but I'm all over the place on different stuff that I use on have on these PCs to do. A lot of YouTube. Oh man, YouTube um, on my tablets. I'm watching. You know, I got Tubi. Uh, there's all the other streaming softwares that that are out there. Let's see, what do I got on streaming on here? Um, I use Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix. Uh, um, Prime, Amazon Prime Video, Pluto TV, um, Popcorn Flicks, and Peacock. That's a lot of streaming stuff to go through, and there's a lot of content out there. Never have enough time to see it all. Stanford, what's the bear score for those of us who don't have Prime? What is the bear score? Yeah, because you oh, yeah. don't have Prime, I think. Uh, you know, considering I'm watching this and not. Oh, I thought maybe you had another. I, did, I do not have it running. I don't have the app running. I don't want to be distracted. 27 <laughs> to twenty seven to three bears at halftime. Whoa, bears actually got a. 27 to three? Wow. wow. Yeah, but the, uh, the last game I will point out, they had a big lead until the fourth quarter and they uh, uh, all stopped playing on the bears. That's why the well, they only got paid for half a game that time. Yeah. Well, they'll keep the coach on. I guess. Yeah. So uh, I, in short, that's what I use mine for. A lot of various things. I have tablets for consumption. Um, my wife has iPads. She uses that for her consumption. Mostly her phone, though. She does uh, everything on her iPhone 12. So, any other questions? This is what we use our PCs for. I think this is a good subject here. Terry. Let me, well, okay. My wife has uh, Apple. She's got, uh, she wrote her book on it, uh, uh, Choices for Healthy Living. And she does uh, photography and downloads in the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a PC over at the real estate office in Hillside. Uh, obviously, we use that for uh both MLS, uh, which is great. Uh, and then we use DocuSign. Uh, of course, at the CPA firm, uh, you know, we've got uh, a big setup, uh, but uh, the PC, I use uh, Word, Excel, uh, ATX uh, software. 
uh, and uh, QuickBooks uh, accounting uh, software. Um, and then the, the one at the house here, I use Zoom and uh, emails. Well, Terry, you've got a lot of stuff you cover too. Well, yeah, we, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we got a full size uh, CPA firm. So, you know, <laughs> we do a lot of stuff, you know, with, uh, you know, we, we got, we've got a payroll service. We got uh, a payroll software for that. Uh, and, you know, so we, uh, you know, we, uh, well, you know, we're a full service CPA firm. So we do a lot of stuff. Terry, how many people do you manage? Uh, we've got like uh, four full timers uh, and during tax season, uh, we bring in another four uh, part timers. Eight employees. That's uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, yeah, uh, the I business understand. is uh, so. Uh, you know, and the government the government wants it that way. You know, they want everything January to. Uh, you know, March and April, mainly to get the money in uh, uh, as soon as they can after the end of the year. So uh, it, it, it's really very condensed. So, and, so you picked uh, up on but, the fact that you know we're we're busy because we're doing uh, what we do like the bookkeeping, you know, which is you know keeps keeps us uh, pays the rent and then uh, the payroll, of course, uh, uh, as well. And so, uh, but and then. And the banks too are always wanting financial statements, uh, you know, for bank loans and stuff like that. So, uh, and the banks always want the latest information possible, you know, when they're looking at loans or making loans. So, uh, you know, it's uh, tax season for us seems to run all year round, which is great, you know. <laughs> well, that's that's a lot of responsibility there. Well, we uh, yeah, we, of course, uh, you know, and then we now we got driver's insurance, so we're you know good, working on getting that going the next couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll get a an answer on a general liability question here shortly. You know. Uh huh. So, do you have to have specific equipment to work in the insurance industry? No, uh, it's all uh, kind of like real estate. Uh, you just. Uh, uh, you know, DocuSign or documents and, uh, you know, pretty much uh, submit it. And then the insurance company, uh, well, they, you know, issued the policy. And then if they want to, you know, if they need it from, you know, from or they'll, they'll turn them down or else they want more information or whatever. But it's pretty much you and the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. I think this My was pleasure. a great I think this was a great topic to go over tonight. Um, yeah. Anyone have any other comments or questions? I have a question. Yes, Tom. Uh, at er other meetings, we've talked about uh, the program Macri and Reflect and how toward the end of the year, sometimes it gets to be something that gets on sale. Has anybody seen some type of sale for that uh, backup program? Which backup program were you referring to? That was Macrium Reflect. Oh, I haven't uh, uh, checked for a uh, uh, sale, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me that there might be one. Uh, but uh, offhand, uh, you got a prime day coming up this month, uh, or a pair of them. And uh, uh, everybody's uh, uh, gearing up for uh, uh, Black Friday sales, uh, uh, Cyber Monday sales, all that kind of stuff. So there's a, a, a possibility of uh, uh, something like Macro Reflect uh, having some kind of a sale going on. A lot of other uh, software uh, that I use for free, I'm seeing all kinds of ads pop up uh, for uh, various uh, discounts that can be uh, quite substantial if you feel it's worth uh, uh, using the paid version. Well, the reason I'm thinking about the paid version is that uh, Macri Reflect works good, but to, to back up the whole disk, uh, it's using a lot of space. And I would like to occasionally just get uh, the portion that's been changed. Right. I, I, I want a differential and incremental backup uh, yeah. capability and restore of the individual files and folders. 
Right. And that you're going to be paying for the product. Okay. That's correct. So I could use a lot less disk space and be able to do a lot, you know, a lot more saving on a smaller disk. Smaller external drive that way. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, it's uh, it works for some people for some people. They don't uh, need it. Myself, I don't. Uh, uh, I have other ways of uh, taking uh, brief snapshots of uh, stuff and uh, saving that. Uh, uh, but to each their own. There's also uh, Microsoft is coming out. It's in beta, uh, a backup program like uh, PC Manager that's 30 years overdue. They're still using the Windows 7 backup software. There's no verification of your backup. And, uh, but they bring lots of different pieces that are in the Windows operating system together in one interface, making it a simpler uh, uh, way of getting backups done. And, uh, it sounds like uh, uh, most of it is going to use your OneDrive, which means that you have to uh, be signed in to a Microsoft account. I only do that on standard accounts, not on administrator accounts. And uh, it would save everything up there and you would be able to retrieve stuff from there manually but they're also touting it as um, a way of doing backup uh, with, um, say you're going from an old machine to a new machine. Like uh, uh, Sanford said, his wife's got an old laptop, needs a new one. Well, using uh, uh, this backup utility, Microsoft's uh, 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 trying to uh, develop the application for and using OneDrive, they would uh, uh, take a copy of all your files um, and information about the programs and settings, but uh, uh, it does not copy the operating system. It does not uh, copy uh, the actual programs. And you can then reinstall that information on the new machine, but you'll still have to install all the programs that you were using on the old machine into the new one and it requires the new machine to be up and running on windows that has just the base install and then you'd have uh, uh, attached to uh, your standard account to the microsoft account that you were using on the old machine and it would say hey all this stuff is missing i'm going to download it to the new machine and it uh, uh, kind of like uh, competes with an old program called PC Mover that cost uh, uh, back when uh, uh, I remember it starting up about 50 bucks. And usually you only used it once in a blue moon and it didn't cost uh, uh, you that much, but it saved you a lot of time moving your stuff from the old machine to the new machine. Uh, this is similar to that but it's not exactly the same. I think PC Mover uh, would actually take your installed programs and transfer them to the new machine. And hopefully those programs would work on the new machine. It depends on the OS of the old machine versus the new machine. Yes, I understand what you're saying. So no, I, was, and I don't think, I don't think they've released it yet. I've seen some articles on it, but uh, uh, I don't think it's generally available yet. Uh, like PC Manager is available. Uh, that's for cleanup and uh, 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 keeping your uh, system uh, uh, somewhat tuned up uh, uh, with just Microsoft's OS utilities. Okay. So back to your original question that you asked uh, was about Macrium Reflect and the fact that are they running any deals? Uh, I just went on their website. I had it up on the screen. Right. Let me pull this back up and share the screen with you. So 
So Macrium Reflect currently on the home edition is offering you one PC for 50 bucks. But if you buy for four PCs, you'll pay the same price I think Bob Primack paid, which was $100 for four machines. And it's 50% off the rate. So, yep. you know, Tom, you want to yep. buy, buy a license for four machines? I'll take one. <laughs> 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 I still have two to sell. You still have, can you sell them? Can, no, can, not no. legally. Can't okay. have two different owners. Oh, oh okay. Uh, <laughs> legal schmeagle. Uh, well, I need. I need it for two machines. <laughs> you need it for two machines. See, two. If machines, you need it for two machines, it's almost worth buying the four licenses. Yeah, because each yeah. machine is going to cost you fifty bucks. You'll get two for free. I don't know what All you're right. going to do with the other two, but it's you know. <laughs> Well, they'll sit in Never Never Land, but that's all right. Right. Well, eventually you'll buy a Windows 11 machine. <laughs> well, now, they do have this product here, which I don't know what it is. It's called One Time Purchase uh, Own Reflect Version Home Version 8 Forever. That means that it doesn't expire in a year. Ah, so if you buy... You get all updates to 8 forever. Ah, to eight forevers if you buy the one-time purchase, right? Right. But if you buy the other ones, you only are purchasing that version. You're only purchasing one year. One oh. year. I get you. So after And they do have monthly. No. Oh. So I, I see the big difference there. So in other words, the annual plan is subscription. The one-time purchase is per version. Yeah, the one time, one time never gets gets updated after oh, a the year. One, uh, the one time actually uh, seven is still being updated occasionally, and eight is definitely being updated. So there are updates throughout the year and throughout the lifespan, and the lifespan is typically at least two years with Macrium Reflect before yeah. they stop updating it. The free version hasn't been getting more updates, but if no. you have the purchased version of eight, you are getting updates. Yeah. And don't forget, probably nine will come out early next year. You mean next year? Probably. So this this annual plan, you pay, let's say you pay 50 bucks for one year. After one year, then what? Uh, they'll have a discount on the upgrade to the next version. Ah, but it doesn't expire and turn off, right? After one year, you would lose the ability to use it. Oh, so Bob, are you in that camp? No. You I, let's see, what did I do? Maybe I, I would get a notice. I, I would get a notice if I were due for an upgrade. Okay. I'm almost a year in. And I, I'll be watching my email, see whether or not they ask for more money or whether they say there's a new version coming. And you could keep, go. obviously, you could keep using that version that you purchased for quite a while. Yeah, I, I'm wondering, uh, you do get access to all future releases for new features and fixes. It does not say whether or not you can continue using it once your one year is up. I think you would be asked for more money. Otherwise, it would shut down. Uh, either that or it uh, becomes a free version that uh, uh, has uh, uh, some limitations over the paid version. Yeah, Could be that, too. Could be that. I haven't actually seen how this plays out because this is the first year they've done it. Right. And I really don't understand what I'm looking at here on the screen. What is the difference between an annual plan and a one-time purchase? Because both of them say access all future releases, new features and latest fixes, right? They both say, yeah. uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, the one-time purchase accesses only minor updates and fixes. And only for that particular version. Suppose they came out with version nine 
and you were less than a year into your subscription. Okay. With the one-time purchase, you wouldn't be able to upgrade. But with the subscription, you could. Okay, but the subs but they don't tell you what happens at the end of your subscription. No, they haven't said that, and I haven't gotten any emails about it, but I'm sure I will. Okay. Uh... I, have, I have a feeling they will say uh, it will either expire or else it will become limited use uh limited features like the free edition uh connect me to sales connect me with support okay connect me with sales all right so let's do this ai interface here um awesome see so you're looking at the home or business home home edition great does the annual plan that's asking for name oh name sam <laughs> mm -hmm. what right. you... uh may i also take your oh i'll be here forever with this thing uh, <laughs> we don't have oh it's well, nine o'clock it says may i take it oh well, no yeah. of course not just keep going <laughs> no i'm gonna close this out because we're at nine o'clock already okay and... i'll do it i'll do it myself and chase it down and then you could tell us what this means yeah. for next time uh, and next meeting and let us know. But there's your answer. Is there an offer? Yes, there is. However, uh, I think some digging needs to be done to figure out what is this? What are they offering here? What are they selling? And yeah. when does this expire? And, and are you do you have to go and buy a new one every year for, you know, 100 bucks or 50 bucks? What? What's going on? And what are you getting? When you and buy it, what are you getting? And and does it does after one year, if you buy that annual, what happens then? Yeah, do you go back to your fall back to the free version that doesn't have the special bells and whistles? Right. And why did I pay that money for this? I I don't know. I, I yeah. don't know the answer. Here. Maybe it's like the subscription for Microsoft three sixty five. Okay, it might be. And then after one year, it stops working. Yeah, I think so. Well, that would be rude um although it would be important for well, them to maintain the ability to restore from those backups regardless yeah yeah that that might be all it does too is be able to restore you just couldn't back up anymore right okay well tom you could let us know at the next meeting um whether that's at tips and tricks or um well I did another it meeting I did it to myself again. I started this one by letting you know about uh, the chat GPT. So <laughs> Yes, you did. So you could let us know about Macrium Reflect at the next meeting. I like this. Participants. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any last uh, comments or questions for this meeting tonight? Great. Mm -hmm. I will thank everybody. I'm going to stop the recording.